In this episode of I Love Lucy, Lucy becomes a spokesperson for a new product, a medicinal elixir called Vitamin of Egamin. Lucy must reshoot the commercial over and over again, each time taking a spoonful of the medicine, unaware of its high alcohol content, causing her to get drunker and drunker, slurring her words and losing her train of thought. The cancellation of I Dream of Genie may have been caused by the marriage of the two main characters, which led to a drop in ratings. At just seven years old, Jay North landed the role of Dennis in the TV series, Dennis the Menace, but despite the title, Dennis was not a troublemaker, and North later pursued a career in juvenile justice. Cloris Leachman appeared in 28 episodes of Lassie in 1957 and 1958, but she was not a good fit on set and refused to sign her contract. In a bizarre twist, Ward Bond and Robert Horton, who played Major Seth Adams and Flint McCullough on Wagon Train, were bitter rivals off-screen. Bond was jealous of Horton's popularity and complained to the show's producers, leading to tension between the two actors. They eventually settled their differences, but Bond suddenly died two days later. Leave it to Beaver was the first TV show to feature a toilet, showing just the tank, which caused quite a stir among critics. The show even had multiple scenes in the boys' bathroom, helping to normalize the portrayal of bathrooms on TV. The Munsters fooled their loyal followers by pulling a switcheroo with the role of Marilyn, causing many fans to not even notice the change. The Goldbergs made history as the first representation of a Jewish-American family on television, and the series showed that they were no different than other American families, with moments of sadness and laughter. The Patty Duke show turned talented teen actress Patty Duke into a big star by having her play two characters, typical American teen Patty Lane and her prim and proper identical Scottish cousin, Kathy Lane. Since the show's star was only 16 years old when the series premiered, it was decided that show would be filmed in New York to get around California's strict child labor laws. During the 1964-1965 season, Duke turned 18 and ABC announced it was moving the production of the show to Los Angeles, but Duke refused to make the move, leading to the series being cancelled at the peak of its popularity. The catchphrase, Danger, Will Robinson, from Lost in Space was only used once in the series, but it remains a memorable moment. The cast of Gilligan's Island almost looked very different, with Jerry Van Dyke turning down the role of Gilligan and Carol O'Connor possibly playing the skipper. Jane Mansfield and Raquel Welch also read for roles on the show. Route 66 followed the adventures of two drifters wandering around America's highway in their Corvette, despite the title of the series, not all of the episodes were set along the Mother Road. Some episodes took place in New England, in Maine and Vermont. Even the episodes that were supposed to be set along the actual Route 66, none of the filming was done on the famous road. The main character of Have Gun, Will Travel, played by Richard Boone, 
was known as Paladin and never had a true name revealed on the show. This led to a lawsuit from a man who claimed he had used the name Paladin in the phrase, Have Gun, Will Travel, before the show aired, ultimately winning the case posthumously. In 1959, Lucille Ball's character Lucy Ricardo appeared on The N Southern Show, as a result of Ball's close friendship with N Southern. Nat King Cole's TV show was cancelled after just one season due to racism, as no major corporation was willing to sponsor an African-American variety show. Elizabeth Montgomery, who played Samantha on Bewitched, couldn't actually twitch her nose like her character, so special effects were used to make it happen. Eric Fleming, who received top billing over Clint Eastwood in Rawhide, had a tragic life due to a club foot, an abusive father, and a fatal accident while filming High Jungle in Peru. My Favorite Martian was the first TV sitcom with a sci-fi theme, starring Ray Walston in the title role. Despite regretting taking the role, he said the best thing about the show was meeting his co-star, Bill Bixby. The famous detective office in the 1958-1964 television series, 77 Sunset Strip, was actually located around 8000 Sunset Strip, not at address number 77 as the show implied. Alfred Hitchcock hosted and produced an anthology show called Alfred Hitchcock Presents for 10 Years, from 1955 to 1965, featuring standalone mystery or thriller stories, and starring major or future stars like Steve McQueen and his wife, Neil Adams in an episode titled, Man from the South, in 1960. The Rifleman, which aired from 1958 to 1963, was the first network TV series to feature a single parent raising a child alone. Chuck Connors played Luke McCain, a widower with a young son and a special modified Winchester rifle, using his sharpshooting skills to keep peace in the region. Initially, the title character did not have a child, but the show's producer suggested adding a layer of complexity by making him a widowed father, reflecting his high moral standard. The Outer Limits is often confused with The Twilight Zone, as both are anthology series with supernatural stories. After The Outer Limits ended in 1965, many of the writers, cast, and crew went on to work on Star Trek, including actors Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner. Lou Costello did nearly all of his own stunts on The Abbott and Costello Show, despite suffering from a severe case of rheumatic fever that left him nearly immobile for six months. The Addams Family, the gothic kooks from the 1960s, was originally a comic strip with unnamed characters. The names Morticia, Gomez, Wednesday, and Pugsley were all suggested by cartoonist Charles Adams and TV producer David Levy. The Nelson family's reality show, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, raised concerns about the psychological impact on the young sons growing up in the public eye. The TV sitcom, Bachelor Father, 
starring John Forsythe, debuted in 1957 and is notable for being the only primetime television show to run back-to-back -back on all three of the major television networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. But the series, which follows the exploits of a confirmed bachelor who is suddenly tasked with raising his teenage niece, has also been praised for being the first television show that featured Asian American characters in major roles. Comedian Sammy Tong played the houseboy and Victor Sun Young played Uncle Charlie. Both characters played major roles in the series and showed the 1950s television audience that Asian Americans were no different than anyone else. The Donna Reed show broke the mold by focusing on the mother character, Donna Stone, rather than the father character, which was a departure from the patriarchal 1950s culture of television families. As the star of the show, Donna Reed made sure other characters had their time in the spotlight by writing many of the episodes. Similar to The Simpsons, the 1950s series Father Knows Best was set in a town called Springfield, with hints indicating that it may be in Illinois, such as mentions of Chicago and Milwaukee in various episodes. The Honeymooners, which premiered in 1955, featured Jackie Gleason, Art Carney, Audrey Meadows, and Joyce Randolph as married couples. Audrey Meadows ended up earning more royalties than her co-stars because of her manager's forward-thinking advice to include a clause in her contract for future reruns. Fred McMurray, who played Steve Douglas on My Three Sons, had a unique contract that allowed him to work only 65 days per session with a 10-week break in between, which created challenges for the director and cast. Amanda Blake, best known for her role as Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke, had a passion for animal welfare and was involved in breeding cheetahs in captivity with her husband Frank Gilbert. She was also known for bringing her pet lion to the set of Gunsmoke and donating to animal welfare organizations. After four successful seasons on NBC, the series Hazel was abruptly cancelled and acquired by CBS, where the actors who played Mr. and Mrs. Baxter were dropped from the series and only Shirley Booth and the two Baxter children were kept. The storyline was written that the Baxters moved out of the country to pursue a work opportunity, but they wanted their children to remain in school, so Hazel and the children moved in with a never-before-mentioned uncle and aunt. This new rendition of the show lasted only one season on CBS and featured a new cast member, a young, teenage ANN Jillian who played Millie, the uncle's receptionist. In the credits of Mr. Ed, you'll notice a screen credit that says, Format developed by Sonia Chernus, which came about from a short story printed in Liberty Magazine in 1937. After graduating from UCLA, Sonia Chernus pushed for the development of a TV sitcom about a talking horse, and eventually, Warner Brothers agreed to develop Mr. Ed. Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B on The Andy Griffith Show, was known for being contentious and difficult to direct, despite her character's loving nature on the show. She even refused to let Andy Griffith and Ron Howard visit her at her home in 1972. Richard Crenna used a high-pitched voice for his character on Our Miss Brooks, but then shocked fans when he used his natural deep voice for his role on The Real McCoys. The Bob Cox
Cummings Show was the first show in television history to debut as a mid-season replacement and help launch the careers of several people in front of and behind the camera, including actress and B. Davis and writer Paul Henning. The tall man in the promo pick is Brian Keith, who later plays Uncle Bill on Family Affair, and the other one is Spike, a famous canine actor, who plays Brown, the faithful companion of Keith's drifter character, Dave Blassingame, in The Westerner. Spike also starred in Old Yeller, A Dog of Flanders, The She-Creature, and The Silent Call. The creators of Car 54, Where Are You, cast 6-foot, 5-inch Fred Gwynn as Francis Muldoon and 5-foot, 7-inch Joe E. Ross as his partner, Gunther Tutti, in order to visually represent their different personalities. After four years on the air, Make Room for Daddy underwent some major changes, including the series being renamed The Danny Thomas Show and Gene Hagen, who played Thomas's wife, quitting the show. The producers decided to continue the series by having Hagen's character die and Thomas's character become a widower with children. This was controversial in the 1950s, as no TV sitcom character had been killed off before. The creators of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, were inspired by the characters on the many loves of Dobie Gillis and based their own characters on them. Freddie Jones was patterned after Dobie Gillis, Maynard Krebs was the inspiration for Shaggy, Zelda Gilroy was the model for Velma Dinkley, and Daphne Blake was inspired by Talia Menninger. If you want to see what old-time vaudeville was like, just watch some old episodes of The Ed Sullivan Show, with its musical acts, guest appearances, comic sketches, and zany slapstick skits. The show may make you think of The Beatles or Elvis, but it was actually a comedy duo from Canada who made the most appearances, with close to 80 guest appearances. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show was based on the real lives of husband and wife, George Burns and Gracie Allen, and Gracie made sure the set was decorated how she would have decorated her own home and insisted on actually doing the various tasks her on-screen character was doing. Roderick Crawford, who played Officer Dan Matthews in Highway Patrol, rarely drove his squad car on the show because he didn't have a valid driver's license, it had been revoked for drunk driving. When watching reruns of Dragnet, you may notice references to an off-screen police officer named Lieutenant Klingon who was actually a real police officer with the Los Angeles Police Department and served as an advisor on the set of Dragnet. Interestingly, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, used to work with Lieutenant Klingon and honored him by morphing his name into the name of his Star Trek villains, the Klingon. The TV Western Laramie, which aired from 1959 to 1963, stood out for its dedication to authenticity. The main characters, Slim Sherman and Jess Harper, actually did the required work on the ranch, such as chopping wood, feeding chickens, and cleaning stalls. The TV series McHale's Navy was adapted from a BBC radio program called The Navy Lark, and like the original, it follows the antics of a zany naval crew in fictional locations. In the BBC version, the setting is the fictional country of Patarniland near the Indian subcontinent, while in McHale's Navy, there are two fictional settings, 
a base in the South Pacific called Teratupa and a town in southern Italy named Voltafiori. Bob Cummings and Julie Numar starred in the mid-60s sitcom, My Living Doll, which explores the quest for human emotions by a robot. The main characters of the 1960-1961 sitcom, My Sister Eileen, were single, career-minded women based on real-life short stories in a book. Richard Crenna was the first actor over 21 to play a teenage high school student in Our Miss Brooks, speaking in a higher-pitched voice to make it seem more plausible. The family's adorable dog, Higgins, who was named Dog on Petticoat Junction, was a tan and black mutt with Cocker Spaniel, Schnauzer, Norwich Terrier, and Border Terrier. He was rescued from a Burbank animal shelter in 1960 and trained to be a performer, later starring in Benji. The Roy Rogers and Dale Evans show was their last attempt to regain former glory, running for 13 episodes between September 29 and December 29, 1962. The Lone Ranger originally had a grueling filming schedule of 78 consecutive episodes, but it eventually switched to a 39-episode format. In The Untouchables, the Chicago Mafia was upset about the show's portrayal of organized crime and Italian-Americans, leading them to put out a hit on Desi Arnaz. The long-running game show, To Tell the Truth, was popular from 1956 to 1968, and one of the first times the show used a guest celebrity, Joan Crawford, ended tragically when one of the imposters, Dorothy Kilgallen, was found dead just hours before the show was set to air. In the late 1950s, the television action series Zorro debuted and was different from other Disney-produced shows, as it was an adventure serial with a storyline that continued for about 13 episodes. Walt Disney gave Annette Funicello a guest role on Zorro as a special birthday gift, knowing that she had a crush on the actor who played Zorro, Guy Williams, who was married at the time. <laughs> 